Very strange and wondrous feelings about Marilyn. Mitzi Gaynor starred with Marilyn in the movie There's No Business Like Show Business, released in 1954. And I think, honestly, she steals the picture. I really do. She is so good in it. She's so good at being Marilyn in it. Sit upon your knee. You grow tired of me. And she, she like, how can I explain it to you? She kind of glowed in the dark. I first saw her in person in the hairdressing department at Fox. I was doing something, like one of my girl pictures, like Golden Girl or the I Don't Care Girl, or Look Up in the Sky, It's a Girl, or you know, one of those things. And this girl came in, this girl came in, and she was all kind of very shiny, and she had like last night's makeup on, and she hadn't taken a shower, and I didn't know who she was, not much. And for somebody to come in the next day with last night's makeup on, I mean, puff, puff, darling, we were really, I mean, insane with teehees. We didn't realize that she was up all night because she was learning her lines and, you know, suffering. Right. She was, what she was doing, I think, was at that time beginning to create, in quotes, Marilyn Monroe. I think that uh, she was known as a dumb blonde. She was about as dumb as Winston Churchill. No, I mean it. She was, she knew what she wanted. She knew how to get it. Killed her. But um, she was used. She gave and gave and gave and gave and gave. I guess you can tell from me talking about hers, I was maybe one of her biggest fans. The final number, when we all arrived the first morning uh, to shoot, you know, we were all in whatever we were wearing, and Ethel Mormon, beautiful white dress, Mitzi, and by the way, Mitzi was quite, just to make that point, Mitzi is so, so darling. She had the most amazing, beautiful figure, and so Ethel Mormon arrives, and Mitzi arrives, and, and then Marilyn Monroe comes to the set in that blue dress, and I, my way of describing it is that everything else disappeared. I know we have this sort of mythical thing about her, but the, the truth is it's kind of true. There's no people like show people, they smile when they are long. If you've seen it in the finale, uh, we appear up on this huge level. To get there, we have to go up these bleachers, up the, I think it was 25 of those, and then up there, and then we have to come down again. And we had to practice that. And she didn't do it. So the first time she did, everybody knew that she was going to trip on the stairs. She didn't trip. Ethel was furious. I kind of said, good for her. She was uh, musically, naturally gifted as a singer, uh, as a dancer. I mean, she wasn't a trained dancer, but she moved. She moved beautifully. I've only come to uh, appreciate that myself with, with time. Every time I watch her, I, I just see some other small little impulse that she, she, she uh, uh, gives, and uh, that's natural. You, you, can't, uh, you can't learn that. So much of what you hear about her is about how hard she was to work with, and so well, she wasn't hard to work with when she worked. She was, no, she, she never upstaged you, she never got in your way, she never got in your light, she never, ever, ever did. She was, uh, beautifully concentrated, cared really deeply about what she was doing. Um, she wasn't, uh, she, she didn't laugh and giggle and talk to people in between takes. That's how focused she was. Uh, and I, I've always remembered that and, and, and admire it tremendously. She was Marilyn and there would be other people around her. She knew what she was supposed to do. She was very good with her lines, but if she didn't want to do it, she would say, well, don't you realize that I, I don't think I'm doing this very well. F take 48. Well, I think, oh dear, what's the next word? Take 96. I, it got to be kind of like that. Nothing phased her. What she did when she went home at night, I don't know. But what she did on the set she was very determined to make herself into Marilyn Monroe. Did Marilyn seem guarded to you? Yes. How? Marilyn wouldn't let you in. She was Marilyn Monroe. She worked at that. 
Ethel and I were, you know, singing and dancing and carrying on, and Donald O'Connor and I would be telling jokes, but she would be in her dressing room getting ready, and, and we always knew that something was up when her crew came out of the dressing room, and she didn't come out. Meaning? She's ready to go. They've done their part. She just wasn't coming out. She would sit in her dressing room hour after hour, and we couldn't get her to come out and go onto the set. She felt she was inadequate. She felt, in certain instances, what she had to offer to deliver in her profession was not sufficient for what the role demanded and the people around her expected, that she would not deliver. And uh, she was supposedly more and more frightened all the time and the more frightened she got the more vulnerable she came, became and the more vulnerable she became the more you could see there was really such a soul in there. There's seven billion people in the world and I would guess the two-thirds of them wonder if anybody else in the world really fully relates to them. She was one of those two-thirds in their heart, they wonder, does anybody really care an awful lot that I'm here and now? And I think she was one of those. What kind of a life did she have? Was She never was really happy. I don't think there was ever anybody that really understood her. I get very choked up when I think about her.